Wednesday from the first snowy day of the season. Just a tiny bit of snow where it's all nice and beautiful. It's not um, disgusting yet. Just light little flurries. that we will be having a gingerbread week the last week before Christmas vacation. So I'm very excited about that. Also, I had this book at home, Blizzard by John Rocco, classic. Absolutely love it. I found it in my bookshelf and forgot that I never brought it to school. So adding it to the collection. Good morning, happy um, Tuesday. And I know that might be surprising because the last time I saw you, it was last Wednesday and I was wearing the exact same sweater and it was a snowy day. But um, jump forward six days because that's kind of the stage of life we're in right now. It is just so busy. So I don't even remember what I said last week, but that was kind of like the intro and I meant to pick up my camera again and tell you what's been going on. But alas, I did not. I do know we were going to talk about my... Um, second observation, which is this perfect timing because I just had my post observation. So I wanted to go over kind of what I did. Now I did share in this video right here, my first observation. Um, and that was during a read aloud and I share kind of everything that went along with it. So I'm going to do the same for this video. Um, but in this video, my observation was integrity and phonics. So phonemic awareness and phonics instruction. So let me show you what we did and any freebies I have, of course, I will link down below. I was coming over to take this off, but I wanted to show you, we have been diving into fairy tales. That's our new genre study, um, which works out great because next week we're gonna read a bunch of Gingerbread Man, which is gonna be fun. But these are the five that our curriculum go over. Princess and the Pea, Cinderella, Stregonona, Paper Bag Princess, and Sleeping Beauty. These are kind of the five we start with. Um, and so last week we just did an immersive kind of jump into these fairy tales with just some enjoyment of the stories and talking about them a little bit. Yesterday, we started our always and often chart um, just to kind of go over what is always going to be in a fairy tale and what is often in a fairy tale. And then today we're going to come up with a working definition of what we think fairy tales are based on this information and the books we've read so far. But this is what I wanted to show you. For the first 10 minutes of the lesson, we did Hegarty. And I told you I pretty much follow it directly from the book. Um, I'm on week 14 right now because it's a new week, but last week was week 13. And it's very similar. Let me see if I can show you some examples of what is in here in case you aren't familiar with Hegarty. So here's the beginning. So first we are just blending phonemes together. So again, we have four uh, phonemes now, which is a lot more difficult for my students, which is why in previous videos I told you I created these, this little visual. So if the word is brave, I am pulling these down as I do it. I say b, er, a, v, and they'll say brave. And then same with segmenting, right? If I say brave, I ask them to tap it and their taps are what makes me kind of move it up. So brave, b, er, a, v, same thing. So first we are blending phonemes, then we are isolating the medial sound. And we also determine, is this a long vowel or a short vowel? And then they go ahead and segment the words. And then we do some adding initial phoneme, deleting initial phoneme, and substituting initial phoneme. And again, I will do that with this. So if the word is brush, b -er -uh -sh, I will stand up here and I'll say, we have the word rush, add b. Or I'll say brush without the b. So again, just some sort of visual for them to see. So I did that for 10 minutes while they sat on this rug, staring up there. Uh, and then at the very end, we do have some blending of actual letters. They can actually see the letters here. So the phonics portion of it, where they see some letters and right now it's silent E. And then I had my aide with a small group back there during this time. Um, she does not take the same four students every time. I like to switch it up so that way the same students aren't getting the same instruction. We kind of just mix it up unless a student has like an IEP that requires them to have small group instruction for phonemic awareness, but otherwise we switch it up. So since that is 10 minutes sitting on the rug, I then like to have my students get up and they go back to their seats and face the board for phonics. And that's what we do every day. 
Um, my students can handle about 10 minutes on the rug or in one spot at the same time. So they just go ahead and then go back to their seat. So they are up and moving and have a new position and then they will face the board. So let me show you what we did in phonics. For phonics, we started off with one of our what's the rule slides. I've shared these before, but these are just a warm up, uh, and I like to use them to review older skills. So for this one, the rule is of course th th, th on this side, and we do have other digraphs over here, um, but no ths. Then we went into a review. We are working on suffix s. So here we have the base word is what we're underlining, and then we are circling that suffix s. Now we also talked about how sometimes the s can make the uh, S sound like snake, and sometimes it can make the Z sound like buzz. So what I had students do is we blended some words together. So I'll say sound, m, sound, ah, blend, ma, p, mop. And we talk about how that is just one mop. And again, I have visuals for all of this. So that's kind of what I do here on the board. And then we say, okay, if we add the S, what sound is it gonna make and what does that mean? So mops means there's more than one mop. And then I will have students either, let me show you, it's easier to show you this way, but once they say the whole word mops, they'll isolate that final sound. And they would go like this, make like a snake and go I can't do this with my left hand, here we go. Let me try it with my right hand. Like a snake, or if it makes the z, they would go z, 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 like a buzzer, like a bee, kind of buzzing. Um, so they would either go s or z, z at the end of each one. That way we have some kind of movement in there, some multi-sensory learning as they are thinking about those final sounds. So we did this a few times. Again, I would say sound, k, sound, i, blend, kid, d, kid. That means one kid. And then if we add the S, this one's kids, and we see more than one kid. So also talking about, again, that singular versus plural and isolating that sound. We do this a few times, rock, rocks, fan. I like to include that glued sound that we were working on in our last unit and fans. And one more, since we've been doing the four phonemes, I wanted to include a blend at the beginning, clock and clocks. Then since my students had been sitting for a bit, I wanted them to practice decoding words on their own. So I said, first, you know, we read all these words together. Now you're going to practice reading them on your own. And we did this with a fun little game called Mix and Match. So I created a bunch of student cards that one has the word and one has images that match the word. And so all I did here was I had already obviously prepped these up. And Mix and Match is a game we've played before with numerous different skills. So students would, let me take it to the back so I can spread these out. Every student knows that when they get one of these cards, they don't show anybody yet. So if they get a picture, they have to put the word that they think it is in their head. So if they got this, they would say, okay, bags. I'm looking for a partner that has bags. Um, and if they have a word, they have to try to decode it. B -i -n -z, bins. So each student would get one of these cards. They kind of hold it, you know, against their stomach quietly and move to the edge of the room. Once everybody is standing with their card, I say, okay, mix and match. And they have to quietly and quickly show their card to everybody and see if they can find their partner. So they will be mixing around the room. I do tell them that when they find their partner, they give each other a high five, like I showed there. And then they move to the edge of the room with their partner. Um, and we do that so that way everybody's still mixing around and looking for their partner is in the middle of the classroom. So they can go ahead to the edge. And then when everybody has their partner, it only takes like a minute or two, um, we go around and check that everybody matched up with the right person. So these two buddies would be like, okay, I have, I have the word bags and I have the picture bags. And I would ask everybody, is that a match? And they just give me a quick thumbs up. And then we have chips and wherever, you know, chips is. They would say chips and a bag of chips and everybody would give a thumbs up. This way, everybody's just checking it in. Then they just pass their cards right back to me. And since that game had everybody up and moving real quick, then we can get back into some seat work. Um, and we wanted to do a little bit of dictation. That was in the foundations today for dictation. So I always play a game called Showdown. I believe I have shared this before, but in case I have not, I'll tell you how to play. Showdown is just an easy twist on any sort of dictation. So students will have their whiteboards and markers, and I will simply show a picture up here and I will say the word aloud. Um, I do have a large percentage of ELL students in here, so I like to include visuals as often as I can. So the first word was tubs, tubs, and then they'll tap it if they need to, t a b z. And I always focus on the root word first or the base word, that's what we've been talking about. Um, to sound out that base word and then add the S at the end. 
So my students are listening for, even if they hear that Z sound, the Z, it's actually an S. So they will on their whiteboard. So students would go ahead and write tubs on their whiteboard and they would just kind of hold it against their chest like this and not show their partner yet. And they are doing this with their face partner. So the person sitting across from them. And then I can see when everybody's ready because their board is down here and I say three, two, one, showdown and they simply show the person across from them. Now at the same time on these lines back here, I am writing the word tubs and they have to check it against mine. So they have to make sure that theirs matches mine. Um, again, some sort of self-regulation instead of me just saying, this is how you spell it. Can you compare yours to mine? And also they know that if their partner doesn't have it, um, they'll kind of coach their partner and tell them what to switch. And then once they both have it, they give each other a quick high five or a thumbs up and then they get ready for the next word. So we did this with quite a few words. We did tubs, maps, lips, hills, webs, jams. Um, and again, a lot of these are CVC words, but then I also have the floss rule word that we've been working on, as well as glued sounds, A-M and A-N, that I want them to review before they add that S to the end. Now, I don't play showdown every time we do dictation, but I definitely do probably every other. It just keeps them much more engaged and excited in the dictation. Um, and I will do it with sentences as well, but I didn't for this lesson. So after dictation, we went on to read and color. Now this phonics portion, the Hegarty was 10 minutes and the phonics was 30 minutes. So uh, I had already told my principal during our pre-observation that this right here, we would definitely not finish. We'd probably have about five minutes to start it, but then students finish this with their partner um, during literacy centers. And this is a game we have played before. So students will each get two cubes and a crayon. They can put their cubes anywhere around the board. And I have these for all sorts of different skills, but this is the one I have for our suffix S. And students will simply roll the dice. They will move that many spaces and let's pretend they land on bells. They will have to decode the word bells and find the matching picture here. And they will color it in with their color crayon. And they just go around and around until all of the middle is colored in. And then whoever colored the most is the winner. So the objective of this lesson, and I told this to my principal during our pre-observation, was really that I want students to be able to decode and encode words with that suffix S. Um, on top of that, I really want them understanding that the suffix S uh, is the difference between a singular noun and a plural noun for what we're going over now. Uh, actually, this week, students are going to learn about the suffix S being used for verbs and for other reasons. Um, but right now, we were just focusing on plural nouns using that S, which is why those visuals really helped. Um, and we had, again, some decoding um, as a whole group. And then I had students doing it themselves with the, mac the matching game. Then I had some encoding practice with showdown and then back to some little partner independent work. Um, really just partner work, not independent, but I just mean without me guiding it. And I could circulate the room and kind of see how they were doing with those skills. Hello, popping back in from the end of the day. Um, I left off telling you about the objective and what we were planning to do. Um, look at my cute little stained glass. We did a mystery science lesson on, we're doing light and sound right now. So we talked about the difference between opaque and transparent and semi-transparent and how uh, stained glass is like semi-transparent. So we made our own little stained glass windows. Let me show you. I'll bring you over to this one. So all we did is use, um, what is it, Glad, wrap and seal. I don't remember what it's called, but insert picture here. It's right on the mystery science lesson, but all you do is use a sheet of that per student and then a bunch of tissue paper squares. And I did give them a little flower that they could put on underneath, but they didn't have to make that design. Um, some were having a lot of trouble, like these two did a great job being able to kind of follow along. Others just wanted to make their own thing and others were having a little trouble trying to keep it in. It was a little frustrating for some of them, but it came out, I thought, so cute. And I like how different they are. So it ended up being a good, a challenging, but good lesson for them. And then we got to decorate our windows. So yeah, that's how the lesson went for my observation. Um, it kind of, I didn't veer from schedule. I did everything that I said I was going to do. I don't have the slides to share with you, but I do have any activities that I shared, like the mix and match and the reading color game. Um, all those things I can link down below for you. They are completely free. So if you're teaching uh, words with suffix S or if you're just reviewing it or if your students need help, those are some activities you can go ahead and grab down below. And I did already have my post observation yesterday with my principal and it went great. So some things that were nice about it that she pointed out were the pacing of the lesson. Again, that's something I really try to focus on. I talked about it in my classroom management video here, but not uh, like setting students up for success. So not having them sit at any point 
uh, for too long. So we are on the rug for Hegarty, boom, we're up to our seat for foundations. We don't sit at our seats for 30 minutes, that would not go well. Um, you just distractions and falling out of seats and all that fun stuff. So have them sit there for a few minutes, talk about the main thing, get up. The mix and match only took a few minutes, sit back down. Uh, we keep showdown or what's it called? Our dictation, we keep that quick, interactive and fun. And then I have students get out of their seats again to go sit with a partner and play. So trying to keep that moving. But overall, it was a good lesson. I got good feedback that felt good. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Tomorrow is Wednesday and I actually have a personal day. So that is something I'm very much looking forward to. I had to take a personal day for something I was not looking forward to that I won't go, won't go into details with, but I was not looking forward to it. And then whatever that thing was ended up being canceled. So now I just get a regular personal day and I'm pumped. I'm gonna go get some breakfast with my husband and I'm gonna use it as a wrapping day and wrap a bunch of presents that need to be wrapped. So that is my plan. Um, right now I'm gonna do some sub plans, but as always, I hope you found this video helpful. Anything I mentioned will be listed down below. Give this video a like if you like my video and be sure to subscribe and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.